this site operated from 74 to 90, which is a period of 16 years. Everything was just buried, so it didn't matter whether it was metal or, or other products. In the early 90s, they realised with the current amount of waste which was coming in, the site would be closed by 2000. So what they did, they initiated a number of practices which helped to reduce the amount of waste going to landfill. Imbriki accepts 200,000 tonnes of waste every year, but we only bury 25% of it and the rest of it is, is reprocessed or recycled. The area that we're in at the moment is just a recycling area, it's the paper and the cardboard. We also in this area recycle things which would not normally be recycled in the home and that's for example car batteries, toys, clothing, tyres, oil. We do metal recycling, we probably take out about 20 tonne of metal a day. My staff will extract material but you'll find that in essence people coming in were quite more than happy to drop off their old fridges or refrigerators or clothes dryers etc in that area. No further use for doors or windows. Or what do they say? One man's trash is another man's treasure. You can buy everything here, including the kitchen sink if you want to. We collect a fee for the disposal of this material and then sort of offset our costs by selling it. Even the, the old yeah. telegraph poles, we find a use for that. We've got people coming in who reprocess them and turn them into beams which are used in the housing industry. It's probably sold at the timber and any materials like this are about a quarter of um, what, what new price would be. So there's a, a saving for the residents as well in that respect. Well, you can see the truck there, which is in front of us, obviously, it's a builder. They'll have bricks and tiles and concrete they bring in. We stockpile it, and then we produce aggregates such as that. That's a, a small size aggregate, but we also produce larger aggregates as well, and they're primarily used in the building industry. The main areas of recycling that we, we are, are able to achieve, and if you look in front there, you can see quite large stockpiles of concrete and brick material. We process approximately 70,000 tonnes of concrete and brick every year and produce products which I'll show to you as we go around. The other main area that we recycle is green waste. This is a green waste processing area. About 70,000 tonnes of material comes in a year. The green waste is kept on site for approximately six months. They shred the material down into a manageable size and then it's composted for a period of time. We have green waste and we also have wood waste because we produce different products from both of them. Green waste is primarily compost or mulches. The wood waste is shredded down and used for within the landscape area for ground cover or other products. You can see some of the material which has been shredded there on site. After it's been shredded on the site, we put it through a trommel. That produces the different grades of material. That's timber like pallets or other material which is no longer use or heavy logs and stumps which have gone through our tub grinder and that's used within the landscape industry. As you can see, there's never a dull moment. We're a busy site. We have approximately 400,000 vehicle movements on the site in every year. So that's people bringing in waste and also people picking up products which we recycle on the site. That large stockpile which is in front of you at the moment is, is road base or material that they've dug up from roads. We reprocess it. If you can see it in the form that it is there at the time, that's where it comes out of the road. To the left of that, that finer black product you can see there is a material which is, is produced from that and that can be used for road construction. There's an adage they say in recycling, they say closing the loop and that's what we believe we do here. The loop of recycling is, is circular. You have a product here which was in, in effect a, a rubbish and then you reprocess it and you can use it in another form. There's terracotta there, that's terracotta tiles. They'll make aggregates and um, gravels out of that which they use in, as a decorative. The material he's loading there is a, is a road base which is produced to Australian specifications and that comes from recycled concrete itself. Kimbricky is a profitable business, yes. We keep it simple. We're producing products which can be recycled. I was once asked, is it possible to have 100% no waste? It is, but the cost of doing that would be probably very prohibitive. Otherwise, if we don't recycle it, that's where it ends up. That's the landfill over there. This is the final resting place. If it gets here, well, at the present moment, it's not recycled. You know, I, I suppose with advances in technology, um, it could well be that one day we'll, we may actually mine this site and recover some of the material which has been buried here over the years. If we had kept filling the site at the, the 1990 rates, the site would be closed now. So uh, what we've been able to achieve is to keep the site open, we believe, for at least another 50 years by being active in recycling. If we improve our recycling performance, it could be longer than 50 years that the site remains open.